Hey everybody, um, fighting a little bit of a summer cold thing, so I uh, got my coffee, I'm gonna edit out any coughing, uh, bear with me. <laughs> uh, so, um, a while ago I, I did a video talking about um, games that you could get into um, if, you're, if you're sick of Wizards of the Coast, if you're sick of their shit. Uh, d games that you could easily pick up, get into, if that don't require a lot of headspace, where the rules aren't too too complicated, um, or they're like a similar kind of crunch or less crunchy. Um, I'll I'll put a a link here to the video if you want to watch that. So the whole OGL uh, SRD thing, you know, was kind of like the last nail in the coffin for me as far as D and D goes, at least for the time being. Um, but I, I, I wanted, I've been wanting to pick up Call of Cthulhu for a while, uh, and, and I dove head first into it and I want to tell you about it, right? <clears throat> so Call of Cthulhu and, and I'm, I am, I'm going to make some D and D references here because I, it's kind of like the, it's the vanilla, you know, it's like the, the OGL or the OG, uh, 800 pound gorilla on the block, right? That everybody's played D and D, and and uh, and Call of Cthulhu has a lot less of the market share. It's a much smaller following. So, in many ways, Call of Cthulhu is kind of the anti D and D. In D and D, you you start at like level one, right, and then you can get killed by a pack of rats and you're just a complete weakling. And then by the time you get to like level 20, you're fighting gods. And it take you know, if, if, a, if a GM wants to kill a character, you pretty much have to throw an army at that character or the person just has to like not know what they're doing at all. So Call of Cthulhu, how is Call of Cthulhu different? So, rules wise, there it's it's not a level based game as far as mechanics go it's completely different <clears throat> it's it's a skills based game um Seth Skorkowski did a really really good video about the differences between skills based games and level based RPGs uh and I'll I'll put a link to that down here um he he talks about how he vastly prefers like games like Call of Cthulhu or Traveler to games like D and D or what have you, any kind of level based games, <clears throat> because uh, it's just it, the he likes the mechanics a lot, a lot more. Like you sort of fail forward, like when you're doing your skills or whatever it is, and that's part of the thing that is really different about the game too is that when you're when you're playing a skills based game there's a lot more skills in the game you're you're sort of you're using your your talents like in call of cthulhu you're a group of investigators you you aren't heroes you aren't legendary heroes you are not heroic at all you're just normal people who are sort of thrown into it and uh, it, like I said before, in D and D, you're level one. You get killed by a pack of rats. Level twenty, you get killed by, or you 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 win when you fight the gods. You can get killed by a pack of rats and call Cthulhu. I'm not saying you can't do that, but <clears throat> when you get to level, when you get to high level, there is no high level. First of all, um, you don't win when you fight the gods. Right? You're lucky if you don't get crushed and they you know pull you apart with their teeth and suck the marrow out of your bones right totally different so if you look at like the the D, &D character sheet you have all kinds of like combat stuff and skin and spells and all that and you're just not going to get that here you 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 have on your on your character sheet in call of cthulhu you have tons and tons of skills you have your character has lots of things that they're good at and things that they're terrible at and it's a percentage based system where 
you um, you're you're rolling against a, a percentile, which um, I'm going to get into that. In fact, and I know it's like. Okay, Steve, you're doing a video about a role-playing game, and you want to talk about the math. You want to talk about the game mechanics first. Well, yeah, because because it's it's different and it's better. It's a totally better system. So, <clears throat> if uh, if you're rolling on a percentile, right? So if your character has a ninety in a skill they're going to succeed 90% of the time. That's just how it works. You have a 10% chance of failure. When you're rolling a 20-sided a dice, a 20-sided dice is so unbelievably swingy. It's like you could get a 1 or you could get a 20 or you could get anything in between. And the, the, the I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you build a character in Call of Cthulhu and you know what that character does and you put the points into it and then you have the percentage where it's like okay I have a 60 in library use or I have a 60 in um, uh, firearms rifles right I know that I'm going to succeed 60% of the time exactly um, so it's a 2d10 system where you're rolling the tens and the hundreds and I just, I, I personally, I just like it way better. So when you're, when you're leveling up your uh, character sheet, I'm gonna pull up a character sheet down here. Um, one of the differences is that when, um, oh shoot, this, this doesn't have, this doesn't have the, um, the character sheets in it. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, the Call of Cthulhu starter set that's on uh, drive through RPG. I'll put a link to that down here too. Um, when I did the old video, it was like 99 cents. It was on, um, it was on sale because they were having a big OGL sale. Um, and right now I just checked and it is $10 on, um, on the, um, on drive through RPGs on their website. Right. And then also I've got, um, uh, Delta Green, just they always have a um, a free version of. There's a, a free starter kit that's up on Drive Through RPG, and they also have an adventure that's free. Uh, so I'll put links to that too. Delta Green is like the sort of the more modern variant of Call of Cthulhu, where your FBI agents or assets. It's it's more strictly modern sort of like uh mostly like 19 you could run it in the 1920s like call of cthulhu but it's mostly more modern where you're playing in like the 60s or, or 70s 80s you know and onward so um <clears throat> but getting back to character sheets and and rules mechanics right so in, in Call of Cthulhu, you have your, um, your, your skills, and the way that you level up is by performing those skills. So doing, your, doing the skills in game. So on your sheet, you're gonna have little check boxes that are next to your skills. And then when you're playing your character, you just you put a check mark in that box whenever you do a successful um, throw, or you do a successful firearms handguns roll, or whatever, right? And then afterwards, when you're leveling up your character, you uh, you roll the dice, and then if you roll over your skill, then you get better at it. So that's how it works. That's how it works. That's the, the character progression. So if uh, most of the time you're trying to roll under your skills, but then when you successfully do it, you know, you check the box and then afterwards when you're leveling up, you you look at what skills you performed and then you if you roll, if you roll over because you're trying to get better at it, you're trying to raise that number so you get better at it. 
then um, then you do you improve you improve those skills right delta green is is the same except for in delta green you fail forward where if you fail at the skill then you check the box and then you roll to see if you get better at it so but but pretty much pretty much the same so <clears throat> let's talk about the 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 setting because the setting is 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 really different too so you you could run you you could absolutely run call of cthulhu in um dark ages um i i did that i i i had a great time i ran a, a one shot set in um uh in yeah 1640 49 like england or something like that in uh in it was a monastery or a um a prison that it was run by a monastery that was infest, infested with plague and uh the the players were had to go in and face a creature that was feasting off of people's sickness inside of the prison and um yeah so call of Cthulhu is a horror game right and uh yeah in if that appeals to you check it out like just period like if you if you like the idea of a horror game check it out because you're probably going to enjoy it but um that's another thing about how it's different from D D is that uh combat is deadly and you do not win against the gods you you survive it's more of like kind of like a last girl kind of like horror kind of thing where you you kill you're when you're gming you're probably going to kill a lot of players and then like there's you might like leave like a few like left standing like at the end of a horror maybe like a jason movie or something like that right it's more like that um not saying that everybody can't survive and it is a bummer when people have to make new characters and you know what i mean right but um so <clears throat> yeah but like i said you know if you're if you're into the horror setting check it out because it's just it's such a great setting um and i would say like if you are into if you're into the whole like power fantasy um god mode or whatever it is you're probably not going to enjoy it as much right because your characters are they're like a bunch of weaklings they're just normal i mean not weaklings but they're they're just normal people they aren't um they aren't heroic like uh we've got got some of the um like typical applica uh, occupations of what your investigator might be like in uh, antiquarian an author dilettante doctor journalist police detective private investigator like just normal people who get sort of thrown into the mix and then have to investigate some kind of eldritch horror so yeah about eldritch horrors right so most people a lot of people know hp lovecraft or they've heard of him or or kind of know about the mythos or have been exposed to it in some way or form so hp lovecraft was a horror writer he's a sort of a pulpy or you know a horror writer who wrote lots and lots of short stories did fiction and was a horrible horrible racist but um was a really good writer <laughs> and uh he um that's the part that we we don't talk about he submitted tons and tons of short stories to different publications and uh sort of built a whole mythos around his monsters and his horror vision right um and uh so call of cthulhu is typically set in what they would what they call i guess they call it like classic the classic setting or something like that basically 1920s which is when he was uh, a popular writer in 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 america and that's like the default setting but typically when i run it um because i'm not really interested in that setting um i always do some kind of modern variant or more like dark ages variant um 
like I, I mentioned the 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 adventure the camp the the adventure that I did where everybody was in the the plague monastery prison. Um so one uh a, a game that I recently ran that was amazing. It was so much fun was um everybody was um they were um a bunch of vietnam yeah they were a bunch of like meet of of marine special forces that were tasked with going into uh cambodia to try and find some pow's that had been captured by this uh, or what they thought had happened to a group of pow people who had vanished from a fire base that had been attacked during the tet offensive and uh, they went into cambodia up the uh, the mekong river and then they had to fight a, gar a river spirit that was raising the dead um and it was amazing probably should have been delta green because it makes it makes more sense in the delta green setting um yeah so let's let's talk about delta green right so what's the difference between call cthulhu and delta green um so where is it yeah delta green is going to be the more like modern variants um and and it's a smaller publisher it can be a little bit harder to find their stuff um like i uh just story time right i when i was getting into call of cthulhu i have just never really been that interested in like the 1920s setting it really just doesn't kind of do anything for me right but um delta green is it's it's set in the more modern setting and it does sort of start in the 1920s because it's based on or the idea of it is based on a, a lovecraft short story the shadow over Innsmouth. so in the shadow over Innsmouth, um there is uh, there's a um a guy who i think he has like an inheritance or something and he ends up going to this town called Innsmouth. And um, the people have, like, they're all sort of like fish people, or they have, like, this, the people that aren't, like, totally fish people all have this weird look about their faces. They call it, like, the Innsmouth look. And um, they, uh, they trade in, like, a lot of, like, gold and stuff like that. And it, it turns out that um, the elder god Dagon is like sort of raising up, bringing all this gold like out of the ocean and giving it to these people and then sort of turning them into these weird like fish creatures. And um, long story short, what happens is, is that the FBI comes in like this guy, he either escapes or he gets the message out about what's going on. The FBI comes in and just massacres everybody, <laughs> right? Um, so that's the story and it's a great story. It's a great story. You know, once again, Lovecraft kind of a horrible racist, but like legit, you, you can look it up. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> so the, the idea of Delta Green is that there was like a sort of a special branch of the FBI that was set up to deal with supernatural horrors, right? So, um, it is typically or pretty much completely set in the modern setting. Your typical Delta Green adventure is going to be in like the um, 1970s, you know, 1980s. Um, a lot of them are, a lot of them that I've listened to are like 80s, 90s. And that setting it's just like so so much better to me like i love it as a setting it's it's modern but people can't just look up the answer to whatever question they want on their cell phone it's like they have to do something they have to go around doing a little bit of investigation to find out what's going on you know they can't just be like oh well i'm gonna hack into the database with my 90 percent computer skill using my cell phone 
Um, <clears throat> so, and again, like you're not heroic, but I guess you're you're like FBI agents, maybe like ex soldiers. Um, there's there's sort of like a little bit of a shadow war kind of thing going on between Delta Green and Majestic Six. Um, Majestic Six is like a branch of the CIA that sort of deals with uh, paranormal stuff. So think like um, more of like the Monster of the Week kind of setting. Like, um, what am I thinking of? Uh, X-Files, right? So that's where the whole Monster of the Week thing comes from. That's where the, the phrase Monster of the Week comes from is from um the the writers of x files like they 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 called it monster of the week when they were writing when because it's one of those episodic shows where you have a beginning and a middle and an end and then there might be you know there might be some overarching story elements like Mulder's trying to find his sister who was induct abducted by aliens and you know there's like some love interest or whatever but but there's like complete episodes where they wrap it up every episode and there's a monster you know um so but delta green a more more long form typically i'm not saying that you can't do a one-shot adventure in delta green but uh, and 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 i do i do that all the time i run run i run one shots of um Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green or Call of Cthulhu in a modern setting, Delta Green kind of setting, all the time. But um, in fact, I think it's easier. I think it's easier to do a one shot if you think of it as like a monster of the week kind of thing, uh, instead of like some some more long form campaign where you have a uh, a, a mystery. And then a creature or some kind of weird, um, like, I'm trying to think of what some of my favorite Delta Green stories are. Um, actually, so my favorite Delta Green story is probably going to be Impossible Landscapes. Um, so I'm just going to look that up real quick. Where is that? Yeah, so... Yeah, um, Impossible Landscapes is going to be based on like it's it it does, it is Cthulhu mythos. It involves the King in Yellow, and um, it's about a it's I think it's it is typically I think it is set in the nineties. I think it's set in like nineteen ninety four. I want to say, um, but uh, the investigators are they are FBI agents. They have to go into a an apartment building like a big um what do you call it like a, an apartment building basically in um new york in the 1990s and i think like rosemary's baby or um what's a what's another good new york horror movie um yeah like kind of like rosemary's baby i guess would be the the classic example but um the the apartment building it's like basically the guy who built it or ghostbusters you know like an evil evor shandor type he the guy who built it was really into the occult and um i don't want to get too too into it because i don't want to ruin it for you if you want to play it or if you want to listen to it to your, yourself um glass cannon network did a really really good version um there's uh, I'll, I'll put a link down there too for that one um but uh basically like the investigators go in and then they're looking for a missing person and there's some things about the case where it gets passed on to the fbi and then there's some things that raise the hackles of the um the delta green where they're like we need to send in some delta green agents to check this out because there's some like supernatural elements going on in this uh, apartment building and geez i don't i don't really want to tell you too too much about it there's like 
floors in the apartment building that are only open at night. They call them the night floors. And then there's, um, it's like another kind of little pocket dimension kind of thing. But it is a pretty amazing um, adventure. And I would, I would say it's my, it's, it's my favorite, but um, there's a lot of like different, different ones. Like there's one where, um, there's one where, or I mean, of course there's a lot of different ones, but one of my favorites is there's one where the players are, I think that they're like CDC uh, and then they have to go in and investigate this really mysterious disease. And it turns out that the disease was brought from the future by a time traveler. And then there's all kinds of stuff that is in, that involves like time travel. And, uh, and, and that's how they get uh, sort of recruited into Delta Green. So that's another great one. And, and, you know, once again, like if that kind of setting appeals to you, like that's that's a huge part of the appeal for me is just the setting is just um doing like a horror game in a modern setting like that is just a huge chunk of what grabs me right um so you know again I'll um I'm going to I'm going to hook you guys up I'm going to show you some I'm going to give you some stuff free um so px poker night if you if you're if you're into it like it, once again like the the call of cthulhu starter set is um it's a really good way to get your feet wet with it it's on drive through rpg right now for ten dollars comes with a ton of stuff it comes with an introductory adventure some characters like all kinds of stuff um pretty good like the adventure in it is really good um it, it also comes with this thing that's like a, a sort of um like a, a choose your own adventure thing um uh, i'm gonna get into that real quick right so so these things right i picked up one of these they're not expensive um these these books like i've got this one's um alone against the dark I'm not gonna lie, I kind of hate these. I kind of hate it. Um, like picture, picture a choose your own adventure book, like the kind of books that maybe you read when you were like 12, but worse. Um, where you, you sort of like, you make a choice, you know, you, you pick a, uh, like if your character does this, go to page, this page. If your character does this, go to this page. And then like, if you fail your skill, you know, at this, like, use this skill and this skill. It will teach you how to play. They're kind of horrible. Um, the, the, uh, I'm not saying that the writing is bad. I'm just saying that I'm not a fan of, of choose your own adventure novels. Um, but, you know, it comes with one of those, but, uh, it, the, it'll teach you how to play. The, um, it also comes with a really, really good adventure, starting adventure for if you want to run it or if you want to play it or whatever for, you know, for your friends. Um, and then the, uh, as far as Delta Green goes, there is also the, um, there's the, the Delta Green Need to Know is, is free on, on drive Through RPG and it's, it's, um, again like kind of a, a starter kit where it's basically just tells you about the setting and then how to play uh delta green and um there's a also a free adventure on drive through rpg called px poker night um and px poker night is really really good um so it's it's a, the um, the players are um, a bunch of Air Force cadets. They're they're on an Air Force base, and they're like young guys, you know, who are they have a poker nights, a regular poker night on base, and then there's some really weird shit that goes down on the base, <laughs> and then basically that's how they get recruited into 
delta green and um yeah so th that's um uh, that's another thing that i like about the setting is that you could you could play it with like delta green where there you have maybe some more seasoned agents like say that somebody has a character who is made it through a few missions and then you know they're sort of more of like a seasoned like delta green veteran um you could have them be the the person who is like sort of trying to recruit some new assets like where the other players the new players like maybe their doctor or their um like air force you know or whatever in this case and then they just have to be happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time or they get recruited to help deal with the, the problem right um which like that that setting just i, don't know, I love it just love it um and yeah i mean it's all, all there's there's tons and tons and tons of adventures out there for delta green and call of cthulhu um and that's another really really great thing it is another really really strong selling point of um delta green call cthulhu is that all of the adventures are backwards compatible they have never done any kind of a an update to the rules that has broken the the system where if you picked up a, a call of cthulhu of, of adventure from 1986 you could run it now and not have to change anything um and that's that's funny though because um if you're looking for those good luck because the people that have them hang on to them and they're never letting go of them um <laughs> but yeah i mean you could you could probably find some some pdfs or stuff like that um let's see what's the the um there's a there's a um <clears throat> I'm just going to find it. I'm going to find it and then I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, here we go. Um, one page one page scenarios by Reckoning of the Dead. And what, what I think, I think that this is like, it's a group of writers and I think that they're just friends. And basically they, um, they wanted to get better at writing. And so they kind of challenged each other to come up with good one-shot adventures for Call of Cthulhu. And um, some of them are amazing. Some of them are kind of garbage. But there's uh, tons and tons of them. Like little one-shot adventures that they they come... It's, it's, it's a one-page, one-shot adventure. Comes with some characters. I've, I've taken a bunch of these and kind of modified them sort of run how i want to but uh they're fantastic so i will put a link to that one down here too but overall you know uh overall review of the game and it's the it's the system and the setting and all that um 10 out of 10 check it out like do yourself a favor I will not steer you wrong here. This is an amazing game. It is super, super fun to play. In my opinion, it is just like head and shoulders way better than D&D. &D. And I, I also just love it compared to the level-based system, doing lots and lots of skills and investigating. And also, as far as D&D &D goes, like, D and D is more of like a combat simulator, you know, where it's like a, a war game with some story elements and RP like role playing and skill stuff like thrown in, you know, like exploration and whatever. And then Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green are going to be completely on the other end, where if you do have players that are being murder hobos or like door kickers, and then they're going around like trying to shoot everybody. Like, that's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Um, like, you can have them all get arrested or, or, or have the, you know, the army called in to deal with them or whatever. They're not heroic enough to take on a whole platoon of, 
of Marines, right? Um, and and I feel like sometimes you have to do that in D and D. Like if you if you want to make combat challenging, but okay. So we're getting back to Call of Duty. Um, <clears throat> you know, for me, it's like the 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 fact that your your combat is super deadly and gnarly, and when you have normal human beings that are facing supernatural terrors the odds of them surviving go way way down when they're not heroic and that makes it more like intense and visceral and you sort of care about them more instead of them being like a superhero right or like a magical transdimensional whatever right so yeah but you know overall i would say like 10 out of 10 check it out do yourself a favor and um, check out some of the links to all the stuff that I put down here. All right. So that's going to be it, you guys. And uh, take care of yourselves. And I will see you in the next one.